Okay, so I just want to cross-reference something before we start. This word remember, which we're looking at in the etymology dictionary. I think it's good to cross-reference definitions because we can be persuaded in our own minds that we think we know the meaning of something. And scripture defines itself, yet sometimes there can be an occasion where scripture seems to imply that a word we think we have the meaning of can mean something maybe that we just didn't realise. So there's a verse in scripture, it's in Psalm 20, which is what we'll look at today. There's a verse in Psalm 20 that equates remembrance or to remember with trust. And I don't want to be making private interpretation or making my own interpretation of scripture. So I thought we'd just look at a dictionary before we begin so that we can discern if there's a sense of that meaning just in the English. So remember a verb it's actually not that old a word in English, 14th century meaning to keep in mind to keep something or someone in mind to retain in the memory which is pretty much what we'd expect to find as a definition of remember in a dictionary. Remember, recall, bring to mind. And you'll see it's got its roots in Old French and Latin. Recall to mind, remember. Mindful. So to keep in mind is from the mid 14th century, meaning recall to mind is late 14th century, a sense of to mention is from 1550s, okay, so this is what I like about looking at the etymology because it's useful to look for the, the meaning that's closest to the King James uh, 1611 or really the closest definition to before 1611 rather than after. So from the 1550s that's around the time of the Geneva Bible coming into the King James in 1611 a sense of to mention it's from 1550s to remind, to bring back to the memory of, give an account, narrate. Okay, so this pretty, pretty straightforward definitions there. But I would look at this in particular to mention. the meaning in English in the decades leading up to the King James version. So Psalm 20 verse 7, Psalm 20 verse 7 says, Some trust in chariots and some in horses, but we will remember the name of the Lord our God which is interesting that it's remembering the name of and not simply remembering the Lord our God. So it might seem a bit strange but we'll get a sense of this because we'll go through this psalm uh, in full, it's only nine verses. So here there seems to be a correlation between trust 
and remember some trust in chariots and some in horses but we will remember the name of the Lord our God scripture here seems to be equating remembrance or remembering with trust so again we can cross reference here this word remember we've got it in the concordance H2142 and see the definition in the concordance see how that cross references with the etymology and of course the scripture so here in Strong's H2142 Zakar or Zulkar, a primitive root properly to mark so as to be recognized. So we will remember the name of, recognize the name of the Lord our God. That is to remember by implication to mention. Okay, so we've got this crossover here, which is why I do love to cross-reference, because I would never have thought that remember means to actually mention, which is to speak, to speak, to speak the name of the Lord our God. And the reason I might not have come to that conclusion isn't because the scripture's lacking, it's because as 21st century people, our understanding of our own language is, is completely lacking. So to remember meaning by implication to mention. So there seems to be an incredible amount of things going on in this verse where remember is equated to trust. And the implication is to mention, or I'd say to call upon the name of the Lord our God. Some trust in chariots and some in horses, but we will mention, call upon, make mention of the name of the Lord our God. So clearly this is a the verse of scripture that's pertaining to salvation. And it could indeed be a physical salvation from enemies, but the language is very much spiritual, eternal salvation. And when it comes to the language of physical and eternal salvation, it's impossible to separate out the language because what's true in the natural has to be true in the spiritual. There isn't a different set of vocabulary for either or both. The only thing that would separate it out would be the context, the circumstance, the situation, etc. So Genesis chapter 4 verse 26 talks about men calling upon the name of the Lord. So Seth and him also there was born a son and he called his name Enos. Then began men to call upon the name of the Lord to make mention of the name of the Lord to remember the name of the Lord. Romans 10, 13 says, Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. In fact, from verse 11, For the scripture saith, Whosoever believe on him shall not be ashamed, for there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek, for the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon his name. Uh, sorry, call upon him 
For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So we can see that the, though this verse will, Psalm 20 itself may be about a physical salvation, the language is absolutely identical to spiritual eternal salvation. It's the language cannot change. And the reason the language cannot change would be that those are calling for physical salvation are actually calling and believing on and trusting the Lord. And if they're trusting in the Lord, and calling upon the name of the Lord, then these are either people that are already saved or they're people that will be saved because Romans tells us that whosoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So, let's go through Psalm 20 and we'll see a theme or two themes that go hand in hand through this psalm. One is the name and two is salvation. So, to the chief musician, a psalm of David, the Lord hear thee. In the day of trouble, the name of the God of Jacob defend thee. What we're going to see as we go down through these, or through the first half of this psalm, is that the Lord is doing stuff. The Lord hear thee, the Lord defend thee, the Lord send thee help. The Lord remember all thy offerings. The Lord grant thee according to thine own heart. And so on and so forth. So the Lord hear thee in the day of trouble. So the day of trouble sounds like a specific event. It sounds like a specific time specific context and on the surface it would imply there's a specific occasion that would require a physical salvation the Lord hear thee so if the Lord hear thee already we've got a reference to someone calling on God or calling on the name of God for help but we can look at this also in the day of trouble in a wider sense every day is a day of trouble for believers in some sense there's rarely a day that isn't a time of trouble I'll just quickly reference a few verses from the Psalms here. So Psalm, so Psalm 41 verse 1, which is also a psalm to the chief musician, a psalm of David, reads, Blessed is he that considereth the poor. The Lord will deliver him in time of trouble. Verse 2, the Lord will preserve him and keep him alive and he shall be blessed upon the earth, and thou wilt not deliver him 
unto the will of his enemies. So we've got a general time of trouble there, but talking about physical salvation. Psalm 46, verse 1. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. So there, trouble is defined much more broadly. Psalm 60, verse 11. Give us help from trouble, for vain is the help of man. Again, trouble is used in that broad sense as an uncountable noun. It's not specific. Okay. Psalm 91 verse 15. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honour him. And Psalm 138, verse 7 reads, Though I walk in the midst of trouble, thou wilt revive me, thou shalt stretch forth thine hand against the wrath of mine enemies, and thy right hand shall save me. And I just want to point out here in Psalm 20, uh, verse 6 says, talks about the saving strength of his right hand. Who's his? Who's him? The Lord. Now know I that the Lord saveth his anointed. He will hear him from his holy heaven with the saving strength of his right hand. So again, all these Psalms tie in together. So the Lord hear thee, which means you're calling out, you're calling to the Lord, he's going to hear you in the day of trouble. The name, the name of the God of Jacob defend thee. How can the name of God defend thee? So why is David not saying the God of Jacob defend thee? but the name of. This might seem a little bit strange to us. Again, let me reference a couple of scriptures. Psalm 9 verse 10 states, And they that know thy name will put their trust in thee, for thou, Lord, hast not forsaken them that seek thee. So clearly, there's an importance in the name of God and knowing the name of God. And I just want to take you over to Proverbs as well. There's a beautiful verse in Proverbs 18, which I will probably be referencing quite a lot in the coming days and months. Proverbs 18 verse 10 reads, The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous runneth into it and is safe. Let me read that again. Proverbs 18 verse 10. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous runneth into it and is safe. Now look at verse 2. So the Lord hear thee, the Lord defend thee, the Lord send thee help from the sanctuary and strengthen thee out of Zion. So what is the sanctuary at the time of David? It's not the temple, okay? It's not the stone temple. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. Okay, Proverbs 18 verse 10. I'll repeat this over and over. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous runneth into it 
and is safe. Here, the Lord send thee help from the sanctuary and strengthen thee out of Zion. Now, I do want to reference a little bit of scripture from the time after, after Solomon David's son has built the temple, just as a little comparison. In 2 Chronicles chapter 20, and this is actually at the time of Jehoshaphat, so it's after Solomon, but this is talking about the, the temple that Solomon built. Jehoshaphat stood in the congregation of Judah and Jerusalem in the house of the Lord before the new court. Okay. Let's go down to verses 8 and 9. And they dwelt therein, and have built thee a sanctuary therein for thy name. Built thee a sanctuary therein for thy name, saying, If, when evil is come upon us, as the sword, judgment, or pestilence, or famine, we stand before this house, and in thy presence, for thy name is in this house. And cry unto thee, cry unto thee in our affliction, then thou will hear and help. So do you see how this ties in? This ties in with the congregation. coming to the physical temple, calling upon the name of the Lord in times of affliction. But this was already a thing before the physical temple. This was already a thing in the time of David. Again, the Lord hear thee. What did Jehoshaphat say? When we cry out to thee, in the time of our affliction, in the day of trouble, okay, and the Lord will send thee help from the sanctuary. The sanctuary is his actual name. And strengthen thee out of Zion. The Lord, remember, keep remembering, this is the Lord doing these things. The Lord Remember all thy offerings and accept thy burnt sacrifice, Selah. So again, we've got this word remember here. The Lord remember all thy offerings and accept thy burnt sacrifice. Let's go back to Genesis chapter 4. Genesis 4 verse 4, and Abel... He also brought of the firstlings of his flock and of the fat thereof, and the Lord had respect unto Abel and to his offering. So when the Lord is remembering, it's not that he's forgotten, he's not a forgetful God, it means he's going to make mention of, he's going to respect those offerings. In 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 5 Ye also as lively stones are built up a spiritual house and holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. Spiritual sacrifices uh, really, that's any time and effort and place where we are praising God, worshipping God, just having God in mind. When we've got God on our mind, when we're praising, worshipping, praying, reading scripture, God counts all those things as sacrifices because we're not doing, serving ourselves. 
at that time or in that place. See, these are spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God. So the Lord, remember all thy offerings. So God respected Abel in his offering. God finds our spiritual offerings. We don't slaughter lambs and goats and bulls, but we make spiritual offerings when we pray to God, when we pray for others, when we worship God, when we give him the glory and honour and praise that he deserves, he alone deserves. Those are all offerings to God. So he finds those offerings acceptable, respectable, and he remembers or makes mention. This is the Lord Jesus. The Lord Jesus makes mention of those things to the Father and acceptable offerings to God. So the Lord, verse 4 now, grant thee according to thine own heart and fulfill all thy counsel. Psalm 37, verse 4, actually one of my favourite scriptures, although they're all my favourites, so um, <laughs> there's... It's hard to really to talk about favourite scriptures in that sense, but Psalm 37 verse 4 says, Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. Do you notice here in Psalm 20 how all these verses are building us up? They're building us up in the Lord, in his in his name, in his sanctuary. So that by the time we come to the last three or four, four verses of this scripture, when we see, talk about salvation, either physical from our enemies or spiritual, it really becomes very, very simple. And that, that's why I love the Psalms, because there's always this building up going on in the Psalms. Verse 5. We will rejoice in thy salvation, and in the name of our God, we will set up our banners. The Lord fulfill all thy petitions. Again, this is fulfilling here, verse 4, fulfill all thy counsel, fulfill all thy petitions. We will rejoice in thy salvation. That brings to mind Revelation chapter 19 which I spoke about in a previous video not so long ago. And after these things I heard a great voice of much people in heaven saying, Alleluia, salvation. Saying, Alleluia, salvation and glory and honour and power unto the Lord our God. The Lord our God. Notice the language here, exactly the same as in Psalm 20. Amen. We will rejoice in thy salvation. Okay, that's what we're seeing in Revelation 19. Give honor and pray, give glory and honor and praise to the Lord our God. Again, these things spoken of here in Psalm 20 at the time of David. And in the name of our God. We will set up our banners. Psalm 60 verse 4. Thou hast given a banner to them that fear thee, that it may be displayed because of the truth. Selah. That's Psalm 60 verse 4. And Isaiah chapter 11 verse 10 says, And in that day there shall be a root of Jesse, which shall stand for an ensign of the people, to which shall the Gentiles seek, and his rest shall be glorious. 
and ensign to the people. So the root of Jesse is Christ, which shall stand for an ensign of the people. So he is our banner, our ensign. And in the name of our God, we will set up our banners, okay? The Lord fulfill all thy petitions. Now I know that the Lord saveth his anointed. He will hear him. Again, going back to verse 1. He will hear him. The Lord will hear him from his holy heaven with the saving strength of his right hand. The saving strength of his right hand. So again, I know I've talked about this a lot recently, but those that say you can be plucked out or that you can jump out of the hand of God, um, I think it just comes from ignorance, to be honest. It comes from not spending maybe enough time in the Old Testament scriptures. I'm a big fan obviously of the Old Testament scriptures, you know that, um, because they really define everything that's spoken about in the New Testament. Um, so look again, salvation issues here. The Lord saveth his anointed, he will hear him. So again this is calling out, mentioning the name of the Lord calling out, crying out to the name of the Lord. He will hear him from his holy heaven with the saving strength, the saving strength of his right hand. The seven we looked at, so some trust in chariots, some in horses, but we will remember the name of the Lord our God. There's so much power in the name of of the Lord. Again, remembrance being equated to trust, remembrance meaning to make mention of the name of the Lord our God. And just two more verses, verse 8, they are brought down and fallen, who are these, the enemies? They are brought down and fallen, but we are risen again. Look at this language, this salvation language coming from a thousand years before Christ came to die, be buried and resurrect on our behalf for our sins. David here really speaking the language of the New Testament. Okay, they are brought down and fallen, but we are risen and stand upright. That's amazing salvation language, even though he's talking about a physical salvation. We are risen, talking about our resurrection in Christ. The Old Testament saints understood this. There's absolutely no doubt in my mind whatsoever that when you read Abraham, Moses, David, Solomon, Elijah, all the Old Testament saints, they were living under the Old Covenant law, but they believed in the New Covenant. They knew about it. They believed it. They believed in Christ, the seed to come, but they also speak much on the resurrection. So David here is saying, we are risen. That's new covenant, blood of Christ language speaking, speaking, being spoken of in Psalms, in the Psalm 20 here. We are risen and stand upright. Let me take you quickly to another Psalm. <laughs> I love these psalms. The psalms are so beautiful, they're so beautifully interwoven. Psalm 125, verse 1, a song of degrees, 
They that trust in the Lord shall be as Mount Zion, which cannot be removed. There we are. They that trust in the Lord shall be as Mount Zion, which cannot be removed, but abideth for ever. There's eternal security there in the Psalms. Okay, again, the Old Testament saints totally understood the gospel, totally understood it, probably far clearer than most, most people today, even saved people. The Old Testament saints completely got this, that they that trust in the Lord cannot be removed from him, but abideth forever. So we are risen and stand up right. In other words, as Psalm 125 says, we cannot be removed. We stand firm, firm in the Lord our God, not just in the Lord our God, in the name of the Lord our God. And just quickly to finish up the last verse, verse 9, save Lord. You see, this is a psalm all about salvation. Save Lord. Let the King hear us when we call. When we call. Let the King hear us when we call. Well, this is a psalm of David, who is the King. Okay, so a reference there to Jesus Christ. Save, Lord, let the King hear us when we call. So we will remember, make mention of the name of the Lord our God. Our enemies are brought down and fallen, but we are risen, risen in the Lord, in his name, in his resurrection, we are risen. Let the King hear us when we call. Amen. So I'll leave that there. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen.